Hello, welcome to From Farm to Closet by Jacqueline's Textiles. I'm your host, Jacqueline Goad. Sustainable performance fabrics are what we will be discussing today. Natural fibers and their benefits to you and the environment. Greetings, thank you for coming. Like I said, my name is Ms. Jacqueline Goad. I have a master's uh, degree, uh, an MS degree, master's of science degree. Uh, my bachelor's degree is from Farrell College in Agriculture, and my master's degree is in Plant Physiology. Um, I have an educational research background in peanuts. Actually, the reason why I'm in Hampton Roads is because I got my start from Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, but then I, I went to the research station to complete my degree program for my master's um, in Suffolk at the Tidewater Agricultural Research and Extension Center. Um, and from there, I got an apartment in Newport days and lived there. <laughs> so I am the owner of Jacqueline's Textiles with the end goal of going from farm to closet with Virginia, North Carolina grown flax. Um, I say Virginia grown flax, but it also might be Virginia, North Carolina grown flax because I might be moving to my family's land that has been in the family since the 20s, but we'll see about that because it's right over the border in North Carolina, which would still allow me to come here to you fine folks who are not here. So I started my farm to closet endeavor officially um, as of April 10th, 2023. I have a garden plot at the Newport News Community Garden. I plant flax. The flax is in the ground. That's me on the day of planting my flax. And um, I plan to process the flax. I will spin the flax into linen and then I will weave it into bolts of fabric and other fine items for sale in my Jacqueline's Textiles Etsy shop. Here is a bundle of flax I've grown before. Technically, I would not consider this the beginning of my farm to flax program, but a precursor. But I grew these in a little garden plot uh, when I was in Northern Virginia. And I will be processing this for hopefully some hands-on classes we'll do here at the library in July. But we're still working on getting all that worked out. <clears throat> So, like I said, I will use this flax and uh, to spin and weave in classes. You can sign up for emails for more details. So I'll essentially make the material, I'll grow the material that you'll be able to work with in these classes. It'll start small first and the class will be like, you know, just like, hey, here's some stuff I grew, now let's use something that's already made. Um, but over time, it would be to the point that we spin and weave our own fabric out of Virginia, North Carolina, Hampton Roads linen. I will learn about the subject matter with you as we create these classes. So let's go over a farm to closet overview, overview uh, of our um, presentation. What does sustainability mean? What does, what, let's define the term of that. Why are intense agricultural processes better for the environment than intense petroleum-based processes? Learn about the performance fabrics from the farm, linen, wool, cotton. Okay, so first to start off, this is my sustainable outfit. Ta-da! Okay, so I've got a cotton t-shirt. I have a hand-woven, hand-sewn vest that I made specifically for this presentation, but also to sell in my Etsy shop. I have a polyester skirt from 2013. And my hat is duped and cotton blend. Sustainability isn't all about eliminating your entire impact uh, on the environment. Sustainability isn't about eliminating non-renewable resources. My skirt is polyester. How, however, how much of an inner environmental impact would it have had if I had gotten a brand new skirt shipped made out of cotton? or if I drove all over town looking for the just right cotton skirt. I wear this skirt nearly every single day. I don't have many clothes. One old polyester skirt or 50 brand new cotton ones. That's what sustainability compromises are. It's like one or the other, a mixing of the two, a mixing, a blend, so you can have, so you can mitigate your impact while still enjoying and getting a lot of use out of all sorts of resources. What is sustainability? 
mitigating instead of eliminating the impact. Stewardship and conservation as opposed to strict preservation. So you're using your materials, you're using your resources to the fullest extent that is sustainable for your situation. So not conserving so much to the point that you don't get to enjoy much of it at all, or even half of it, but using it at that cross between the, the, the two curves, as I learned in economics class when I was majoring in business for a short time. There's that curve where you have the benefit of the material and the impact of the environment. And where they meet in the middle, that's where you want to be. It allows for the use of materials and the moderated enjoyment of those materials. It conserves space and resources for future generations. What sustainability is, is to make it so that we can enjoy it and our future generations can enjoy it. Um, we, pr prefer, we prefer renewable resources to non-renewable resources. We make sensible compromises with synthetic materials. We're not outlawing, out banning, not using at all not uh, non-renewable resources we're using them in moderation because they are a resource and we should use them just in moderation so it's all based on the convergence of the benefits of society economy and the environment right in the middle there is is sustainability now why admittedly intense agricultural practices as opposed to fossil fuel based practices for your clothing well, agriculture doesn't ag, as, I, as we called it in school, doesn't have to be as intense as it used to be. I, you don't have to detail, as in like turn up all the ground for 10 inches deep and then apply biocides. You think pesticides are bad? Biocides has killed everything. It's in the name. Life death. Biocide. Um, so we're not doing that anymore. Um, there's a vast array of sustainable agricultural practices in modern day. There's no-till, where you don't touch the ground at all, except you just dig a little hole and put the seed in, and that's where your precision farming comes in, where you're really, really honing in the amount of energy you're exerting by essentially using satellites, GPS, these big giant machines go through the fields and put little holes perfectly in the ground and drop the little seed perfectly in the ground and everything is nice and perfect and precise. And no-till works with that in that you don't till the ground. You just go in, put your little hole in, and plant it among all the growth. Shallow till, not tilling very deeply. Biotill, using foraging crops like clover, um, fescue, various uh, crops like that to do the tilling for you. Because what does tilling do? It breaks up the soil. So that way you have nice, aerated, fluffy soil to plant your beautiful seeds in so they'll grow nice and healthy and strong because they have that nice soft bed to grow and sprout and spread when they're very small and kind of weak. Um, also crop rotation, that's almost as old as time. Crop rotation, for those who don't know, is you grow a crop in one section on one year, then don't grow that same crop. You can grow something else, or you can give that piece of land a break completely. Um, and you rotate that out so that way the soil is not constantly depleted of the nutrients that, let's say, corn would take out of the soil. What makes farming sustainable? It is essentially renewable resources nonstop. You got your soil, your air, your water, your seeds. They can all be regenerated, replenished, and or found. Farming products rot. That is what sustainability is essentially about. You want products that rot. You want your food to rot. You want your clothes to rot. You want everything that goes into the process of creating those things to either rot or not have that big of an impact if they don't rot. Petroleum-based fibers will not rot in your lifetime in the same conditions. Blending of the fibers allows for performance, mitigation of unwanted properties, and the lowering of costs. So you can still put your non-renewable fibers into your clothing, just mitigate the impact of that by blending it with cotton or linen or wool, which you really need to do with socks that are made of wool, but we'll get into that. So let's say, talk about our performance fabrics covered today. Flax, lit, which is also, flax when it's the plant is flax, and then you take it and you process it, and once you spin it, that spun string, that is the linen. 
Okay, so it's cooling, it's moisture wicking, wicking, and it's antimicrobial. Wool, it's temperature controlling, it's moisture wicking, and it's antimicrobial. Cotton, it's cool to the touch, allows you to aggressively launder, and inexpensive. Other performance fabrics not covered today. We've got silk, it's temperature regulating and breeds. Hemp, temperature control, durable, antimicrobial, and it is not the same as your typical marijuana. It is a different, I think, subspecies, but it's, you, you can't, you're not gonna find this at the smoke shop. So, there. Um, nettle, temperature regulating, fire retardant, food, medicine, and dye. I've eaten nettles, I've made uh, an infusion of nettles. My daughter loved it because it was, it gave her, it was a bit like a caffeine boost. She was really into that stuff. So let's go back to that subject of rotten fabrics. The more rotten, the better. Why? Ask yourself, why do we need mothballs? Why does your dry, dryer smell like that when you forget to start it? Why does the neckband of your favorite 1983 Metallica World Tour t-shirt look like something's been chewing on it? Rot, decay, deterioration. That's what you want if you're gonna be sustainable. The fabrics are breaking down and deteriorating. While you can most likely pass on your Under Armour to your grandkids, Metallica won't be so lucky. For sustainability, the more something is prone to rot, the better because it will go into the earth and the antelope eat the grass. If you know that reference, there you go. Flax makes linen. It is a bast fiber, i.e. the fiber grows in the stem of the plant. So where do you get the flax from? The stem. And what does the stem do when the plant's in the ground? It takes the water from down here and wicks it up. Just because you take it out of the plant doesn't mean it's gonna stop doing that. So it will do the same for you. It will wick your moisture off of your body, giving you a nice cool feeling. The cells and the, the tissues, the, the cells and the tissues in the stem, as you will see with the other performance fabric, operate the same way they do in the, fat, in the plant as they do in the fabric. Sorry, I lost my place. The same applies to the antimicrobial nature. Why are these fabrics antimicrobial? Well, you have to consider the fact that plants can't run away from disease, they can't run away from predators, they can't run away from a lot of things. They can't run at all. So therefore, they have these built-in defense mechanisms that beat back molds, bacteria, virus, all those really nasty things you don't want. Like. A person would say, oh, that person over there is coughing, let me go sit over here. Plants can't do that. They have to have it already built in. Well, like I said, just because you take it out of the plant doesn't mean it's going to stop doing that. Like I said, flax is cooling it with its moisture. It used to be the layer next to the skin in times of antiquity, really up to the 1800s, um, when cotton kind of took over. Um, that's what people wore uh, underwear. They would have shifts, chemises, smocks, and that was the layer close to them. They would want to launder it uh, frequently. They have, you know, several in use to trade out. And then they put like their wool and their other fabrics on top of that. And that kept the other fabrics clean from the, the moisture and the, the stains and such like that from the body. And then you wash your uh, linen really well. Um, who knows, man, we could change out our Under Armour for the original. Because what does our Under Armour you know, pride itself on, it wicks moisture, it keeps you cool. However, with linen, it's inelastic. The fibers don't, are, are not elastic at all. So they wrinkle horribly. Um, but if you blend with cotton, that makes them less prone to wrinkling. Cotton, therefore, is more of a by proxy performance fabric and that will also lower the cost. We'll get into how cotton isn't quite what we'd consider a performance fabric, but it is a performance fabric by proxy if you mix it with the other ones. Wool, cuddly yet surprisingly cool. This fiber grows from the follicles of sheep skin and some other creatures, but mostly sheep. Animal fibers are either hair, fur, or wool. So wool is one of, is the, one of the, the most basic breakdowns of fiber. So it's not like wool is a type of hair or a type of fur. It's either wool, hair, or fur. And then you get certain types from that. 
Sheet produce lanolin that coats the wool, making it waterproof. And as somebody who cloth diapered with cotton inserts and wool shorties, you will see the picture of my daughter in those soon. Um, I can I can sing the praises of lanolin all day. It really does waterproof your wool. Um, the wool absorbs a lot of moisture. There's a barrier. The, the lanolin, which is like the sheet sebum, almost a sheet excretion from the skin to moisturize the skin as well as keep the waterproofing in the uh, wool. Another th another area of, hey, maybe we could trade out, oh, look, I've got this waterproof, I don't know, I got my Gore-Tex, maybe we could trade it out for some, uh, for some lanolin. I don't know. Um, it regulates temperature Wool is warm in winter and cool in summer. It might seem like wool is just only for for, for being warm in the cold, but wool, but wool is an all-weather fabric because it has to regulate the temperature on the sheet. It's not going to stop doing that once you take it off the sheet. So if the sheep are in the summer heat, they can't burn up because the wool is keeping them too hot. That wool has to help them survive. That's why they have it. So. If the wool is not going to be cool in summer and warm in winter, how is the sheep going to survive? It can be extremely itchy. I speak from experience. I've even bled because of wool. So I love wool, but I will be the first to tell you it can cause some problems. Um, some folks are allergic. Merino wool and other types uh, like it can solve this issue. Merino is so soft and non-problematic that I had it next to my baby's skin for months, years, um, over a year, because I mean, you know, wear diapers for years and years and years. Um, but right next to her skin, never caused any problems. Um, wool has a hard time standing up, uh, oh, sorry. Um, so there are types of wool that can bypass your normal allergic reactions and the itchy itchies. So I'm not sure if I'm allergic to wool or if my skin just doesn't, it, it's just mechanically irritated by it. Wool also has a harder time of standing up to the rigors of wear, like in socks. That's why you often see the heel and the toes redone in wool socks because the, the wool can't stand that kind of strain. But you mix it with something like nylon and there you get that compromise between the, the uh, non-renewable and the renewable resource and you get stronger wool that lasts a longer time. These are smart wool socks. These are like the hikers, all of them love them. Uh, these are not your grandma's wool socks. Those are wool socks. Wool blend. Cotton, performance by proxy. A hair covering the cotton seeds in the bowls. So these are bowls. Not balls, but bowls. And they have very pretty flowers. Cotton is inexpensive. That's one of its biggest selling points. It can hold up to extreme temperatures for laundering. So if you really want to get it clean, you can give it everything you've got, just don't add any acids. It doesn't like acid. Um, but cotton is not a performance fabric per se. It's cold and clingy when wet. Cotton kills, as they say in hiking and outdoorsmanship and stuff like that. It gets wet, it gets cold, and it sticks to your body. And if you are wearing a base layer of cotton and you're out in the cold and and you um, sweat, you're going to get really cold and really hypothermic real fast. So don't wear a base layer of cotton if you're hiking in the Andes. Have you ever had uh, wet cotton socks? You know why cotton is not a performance fabric like wool and linen are, because that's not going to really happen like uh, cotton. However, you blend with other fabrics and the cotton knocks down their cons. You mix, like I said, you mix it with linen, less wrinkling. You mix it with wool, less itchy. Um, like I just said, blend with linen and the elasticity inherent in cotton prevents serious wrinkling. It also lowers the cost, lowers it. Um, blend with wool and you lower the cost. But there's not many low, uh, wool blends from what I can see. So therefore you can do what I did. Add a 100% cotton layer under wool and you get the comfort of cotton. Add the benefits of wool without the itch. So when I'm going into a cold situation, I will wear thin cotton socks under wool socks. Because for some reason, when I wear wool socks, my feet feel slimy. 
And it, it, but when I like take my socks off, my feet are dry. It, it must be like the, the way it absorbs the moisture and wicks it away. It just has a slimy feeling. So I like to wear cotton underneath the wool and the, they combine together to make it feel like I'm constantly just wearing, you know like when you first put on a pair of socks and they're all warm and comfortable and snug and dry? It feels like that all the time. Um, I wear long sleeve t-shirts under super itchy wool because my sweaters are warm, I like them, they're natural material, I have a sweater for natural materials, but they itch. So I wear a long cotton t-shirt underneath and therefore I get the warmth without the itch. And I cloth diaper my daughter, you can see her little shorties here. Um, I cloth diaper her, the cotton absorbed what it needed to absorb, and the lanolized merino held the moisture in while also waking it away. There was no, she never had diaper rash, she never had blowouts, no, she never had blowouts, and she, uh, and she often had a dry boom boom when I changed her. Sustainability closing thoughts. So, sustainability is about compromise with your society, economy, and your environment. On a person-to-person -person level, like my skirt, but also on a national and international level. The more educated you become about where your fabrics and foods are coming from, the more effortlessly you'll be able to make sustainable decisions. The harder we work for something, the more we'll value it and keep it for long-term use. I treasure all of my belongings made of natural materials, whether they're leather, wool, linen, cotton, wool, synthetics, not so much. It's plastic, who cares? Which group will I take care of and keep as long as possible? which means they're not in landfills. Sustainability means the more we can grow and source locally, the more enriched our culture. I am totally digging my hand-woven, hand-sewn vest. I'm not just plugging it. I really like this thing. I'm going to make one in brown so I can wear it while I'm Ubering, and I'll have a pocket for my phone so I can have hands-free while I talk on my phone that's in my pocket. Imagine a Hampton Roads where we have classes to spin and weave locally grown flax, wool, and cotton. Imagine creating an industry, a local industry, where our fashions are coming from that which we grow, make, and sell. My endeavor at the Newport News Garden could be just the beginning for all of us. It worked for Miami Vice, Miami in the 80s. I've heard it said that apparently a lot of 80s like that Miami Vice fashion came from Miami because that's where Miami was set and that's what everybody was wearing and doing. And when everybody started watching around the country Miami Vice, they started emulating essentially the fashions and the way of Miami. So learn more, everyone here. Sign up for email updates about class at the library and private law enforcement classes. Link up with the Newport News Library webpage to learn more about coming events. Keep an eye out for more information for more hands-on library classes where you'll get to try your hand at spinning and weaving. Try growing flax and cotton in your garden. Get a garden plot with the Newport News garden to grow your own fiber and food. Get a pet sheep. Getting a pet sheep might be a bit of a stretch at this point, but as we work together to make sustainable Hampton Roads, maybe pet sheep will become a thing. Brought to you by Jacqueline's Textiles. See me at jacquelinestextiles.etsy.com, Jacqueline's Textiles at protonmail.com, Fabulous Fabrics for Home and Fashion. Thanks to the Newport News Main Street Library. Contact me for work cited and also fill out the email form if you are interested in some private small group weaving lessons. All right, thanks so much. Any questions? None of you have questions because none of you are here. But for the YouTubers, I hope you enjoyed this presentation that I will post shortly. Bye-bye.